Hey everyone, it's LS, and this is the patch 13.22 notes rundown here on the FlyQuest LOL YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, their riot did not end up going through uh, through some of the things, and it is a bit obviously unfortunate. So patch sucks, but we'll get into it. So brand monster damage modifier increased, e damage is increased. So this is obviously really good for a lot of people that don't know. Once upon a time, a couple of seasons ago, brand was actually probably one of the best junglers in the game because he could clear on the move. And this is when we used to have the old jungle items and uh, the talisman and the machete and whatnot. And then after the changes to jungle, brand actually became not viable because he couldn't actually clear the camps in the amount of time that he needed. Now, the passive monster damage modifier increase and the E damage increase is obviously good for brand, but you do have to remember that all the camps did just end up getting P and all that. So, E conflagration, the damage, however, is going to end up going up. You're actually just getting more AP and you're getting more flat damage later on inside of the combo. So, it's overall just a buff to brand for mid brand, top brand, support brand, even too. And obviously, for jungle brand, I mean, this is all, you know, totally fine. So, it is really, really good and it, it does make him a lot better. But I, I don't think that it's enough to actually nudge him where he wants to be. Briar, Q damage and armor shred decreased. R damage is decreased. Head rush is basically the same exact thing as we saw inside of the preview. So it's just missing 20 flat. And the armor reduction is still going to be down by 6% at max rank. And then the R certain death, I don't think that this is really the end of the world. I think this is all fine. I mean, it, it is a minor amount of damage missing in the early ranks for when you are doing the Q head rush and whatnot. But I don't think this is going to matter because Briar is just going to find lethal anyway in most of the cases. So... It's not that big of a nerf. The 6% is, I guess, a little bit problematic later on inside of the game. But outside of that, it, it, I think this is totally acceptable for Briar changes. Dr. Mundo, E passive bonus damage has increased. E blunt force trauma, 2 to 3% to 2 to 3.4% again. Now, if you saw the Twitter thread that I ended up posting yesterday where the AD carry player got dogged down by a Dr. Mundo and there was a bunch of AD carry players inside of the replies that don't understand that their class is not supposed to be able to beat Mundo's class in a 1v1. And then there's people that chime in saying that their class is actually designed to be able to kill the tanks and shred the tanks. Sure, when you're getting peeled and when you're getting blocked for, yes, then your class is actually supposed to be the tank killer because all the other classes are unequipped to actually kill the tank unless it's a dot mage or something like that. But obviously... Obviously, no one uh, in those Twitter replies has ever played a game besides League of Legends, and so they have no experiences uh, playing, you know, MMORPGs or, uh, you know, even, it, not even MMORPGs, RPGs in general, too, or just, you know, RTSs even, and all these other type, types of game classes, etc. So, Mundo ends up getting buffed a little bit. Now, the passive bonus attack damage doesn't matter, actually, that much. Um, so it, it's, it's sort of whatever, because again, it, this only ends up like really mattering once you're at like four or five items and four or five items on Mundo is almost like not a real thing, especially not in competitive. So it doesn't matter. Dragus, E cooldown reduction is increased. R travel time decreased. E body slam. So the refund on hit three to 40%. We did the math for you. Three to 4.8 scaling with ability haste. Okay. And then R, uh, explosive cloak cast travel time 0 0.55 seconds to 0 0.5 seconds. So this is all fine. So <clears throat> they speed up his R damage, which actually maybe messes, uh, with the muscle memory of some Gragas combos. But for the most part, it's fine. What this does is it nerfed the Gragas super high ability haste builds, and it actually just made Gragas overall better. So it it's uh, overall nice buffs for Gragas. Uh, Graves, E bonus armor per stack has decreased. E quick draw bonus armor per stack, 4 to 16, 2 to 14. This is mostly just a nerf for top and mid graves. For jungle graves, it doesn't actually matter that he doesn't have that much armor because he's already so healthy as he is. And when he does situationally fight you inside of the jungle, typically he's going to be missing like four armor or something like that at this point. Maybe he's going to miss a little bit more than that. Um, but realistically, it's not going to be getting up to like a rune point or something. So, while it is a very minor nerf, uh, you'd have to play so many games or something for this to actually translate to something like a kill or like whatever. Ghana, stats and ability adjusted it to fit the playstyle of a more aggressive harasser around W and auto attack. So they're giving Ghana sort of like the mini rework and what I would recommend rather than go through all of this again is just check out the patch preview and whatnot because it does seem like everything here is the same. And that is also here on the FlyQuest YouTube channel, and I talk about, obviously, that being, like, a mini rework. Cassante, so this is one of the funniest things going on. So, Cassante is an abomination that everyone, everyone is in unison about on, basically, Twitter. 
even people that normally you find saying that, you know, certain champions are actually fine and that their current state of, you know, play and, and solo queue and everything else is actually fine, yada, yada, yada. Even those people are jumping in that Cassante is actually problematic. Q bonus health uh, for minimum cast time cap increased by 400. Okay, so um, let's take a quick look here. Let's take a little bit of a look-see um, at what's going on with Cassante. So, <clears throat> yeah, so... This is uh, this is very good. So we can we can see the nice little big big spike here on uh, win rate, and we can also see the nice giant pick rate. So his pick rate has also skyrocketed, and then his win rate has skyrocketed. Okay, that's very cool. That's very that's that's very nice. So pick rate, win rate skyrocketed. Game count has now skyrocketed, and hey, look at that. Ban rate has all skyrocketed. Amazing. So I don't, I don't, I, I'd actually be really curious what the logic is at this point when all of these numbers are actually just out of control and the graphs are consistent every single rank. What would be the logic why Cassante is actually not getting looked at? And it gets even worse when you actually go into the meat of some of his matchups and you realize a lot of the things going on. So one of the absolute worst balance patches. And again, I mean, th th this patch is a total joke. Again, we, we don't have competitive going on. We're not going to have competitive going on for a while. Um, Riot's last three patches are just utter, utter garbage. And th this generally is the trend. Normally what will end up happening is Spring Split will actually be like somewhat okay-ish. Um, and then we'll get around to summer. And then summer begins like the long haul where the meta is like somewhat locked in. They're sort of playing the same stuff after MSI. If we have the mid-season update patch, sometime there's hope uh, for for something to like change, but not all the time. Like uh, like even even this time around, like we didn't actually get that much changing. Right? We had like Jinx Aphilios, um in spring dominating everything, and then we had the slight changes and stuff, and then we we should have had actually uh, a large change. But obviously, pro players are very very slow to adapt and change things and they're not willing to basically move out of their comfort zone and things of this nature. So obviously that should indicate that Riot should be the one to go in and just forcefully change things. Um, but it seems like we have this obsession with the win rate data and numbers. Now, I, this is a question that I guess I did not ask the balance team um, earlier on in the year when we, we did the AMA with the balance team and we talked about balance and everything. I don't actually understand what is so wrong with a champion actually just be well no i mean we know that they're fine with champions being really bad in solo queue right we know that we we know that they're fine with rise being absolutely abysmal as long as he's good in pro play we we know that this is true why is the invert not okay why is it not okay for certain champions to have 55, 56% win rate in, inside of solo queue? Or why why is it not okay for certain champions to have really high win rates? Now, obviously, we, we have Cassante, you know, running a running a train on absolutely everyone. Like, you know, he's trying to open an OnlyFans. But what what's really happening is why do we not have more champions like Cassante at various tiers and stuff like that? And that's just like sort of like allowed to almost exist. If what it means is that in pro play, we get like more diversity in these types of things. And obviously people would talk about like the silent majority and these types of things and whatnot. And there's a huge conversation about like the silent majority that you could obviously have. And I think we actually do have it in that video. Um, but anyways, complete nightmare. Costed and E damage decreased. Our non-stack damage is de uh, decreased. So Costed and the TLDR, is he still going to be up and buffed from where he was at before when they gave him the um, the silent buff in 13-14? Nyla, uh, Q bonus stack speed decreased. Our damage over time decreased. And total damage, uh, total maximum damage is decreased. Okay, Q formula's blade. Bonus stack speed 10 to 60 based on level. 10 to 50 based on level. This is all fine. Uh, apotheosis, etc. So this is totally fine. Nyla, one of the most under-researched AD carry just champions in general. And if you actually watch one tricks on her, you see her in proper pairings. You see her picked in correct spots, etc. She's already actually overkill. I would actually argue that she is imbalanced. And so for her to be getting nerfed, in that way, I think it's totally fine. Uh, Ramus, W bonus armor increased. Okay. Um, Senna, Q damage and healing decreased. So it's very funny. Um, very beginning of Worlds, obviously, uh, myself, Revan, Drew, two others, we made the Worlds competitive tier list and we had Senna very high and uh, we got, uh, well, me and Revan got flamed, um, obviously, for putting Senna as high as we did uh, at, at Z tier inside of support. And we're seeing Senna actually appear 
lately. Um, and Senna basically can be picked into the mass. She can be picked almost into, well, she, yeah, I mean, if you really know how to utilize her pairings, um, then she, she has an abundance of variations that she can go with. She's very, very, very malleable inside of draft. And her baseline kit is just extremely oppressive against a wide range of champion themes and, and team compositions. So it's not a very, very, very good champion. And obviously, she is going to be losing quite a bit here. I and mean, she's going to be losing 20 damage at rank 5 on Q. That is actually kind of disgusting. You're really going to start feeling the pain at rank 3 where you are going to be missing 10. And obviously, this is a big deal because of the way that she weaves her combos. And the healing is... I mean, the healing is... is, is I mean, it, it feels a little bit bad that you're going to also be missing healing, but um, the healing, I guess, it really only plays a part in the early stages. So again, you are going to be missing 10, um, and that's if you're casting it on your ally. And I would say that Senna's, Senna's healing, depending on like how the trades are, you're mostly looking at rank 1 and 2. So it, I, rank 1, obviously no change there. Rank 2, 5. Uh, HP. Seraphine passive adjusted Q damage increased at low levels. W shield is decreased. So again, they can't seem to make up their mind on what they want to do with Seraphine. Um, so the cooldown on, on high note is going to... Wait, so wait. Uh, Q cooldown increased at lower levels. So, okay. So, um, passive damage is adjusted. Um, so the AP on it is going down. So if you're, if you're stacking a ton of AP... Okay, but the base on it is... Okay. So the base on it is just outright going up by an extremely negligible amount. And then Q high note, the cooldown on it is going up at early ranks for just spamming. And then um, the shield is going down by 5% AP. Okay. Um, they cannot make up their mind with Seraphine. Passive bonus magic damage uh, decreased and acquiring taste. This is fine for Tom Kench. This is obviously Son of Tom. Zig's basic attack wind up increased. Base armor is decreased. So Zig's obviously dominating pretty much everything right now. And this is also a champion that's able to be flexed into mid lane. Very sad that we're not seeing more of him just in general at Worlds. Basic attack frame um, is going to go from 20.8 to 20%. And then base armor is going to go from 22 to 18. So he's actually getting nerfed in a, a, a little bit more of a minor way than in uh, the patch preview. So he's losing a little bit of armor, which obviously affects him in bot lane more than anything. Um, so these are the attack speed windups. So basically what, what, uh, oh, actually, no, sorry. He, he gets buffed here and then nerfed him the armor. Okay. These are the attack speed, um, windups, uh, is what's going on here. Um, so 20.1% for Ari attack speed ratio is going to go down. Attack speed is going to be unchanged and the attack speed growth is now going to be a buff for, um, Ari. And now Anivia uh, basic attack speed is just going up. That should make Anivia players a lot happy. Base attack speed ratio and missile speed uh, increase. So this is actually really big for Annie um, because her auto attack range is one of the largest in the entire game. So her being able to poke you and weave in more combos and stuff, this actually does convert to a lot of extra damage inside of the laning phase. And that's the way that it should be looked at, especially now because the missile is even hitting you faster. Um, th this means that her jousting is even better when she's looking for lethals with like flashes and tibbers and stuff. So um, Cassiopeia basic attack, uh, this is really big. Again, another lane bully, um, that utilizes her range advantage and spacing and everything. So I think this is very big as well. So very massive for top Cassio and for mid Cassio. Heimerdinger basic attacks wind up again, another, another really big one. Ivern basic attack speed wind up really good. Uh, restored an attack animation. Restored, uh, an attack animation will be used at 25%. Okay. Um, for critical, obviously, he's never critting. Uh, okay, this is obviously nice for Karthus. Um, the, the missile, this will actually help his jungle clearing, so Karthus getting even more love. Um, LeBlanc, Lissandra. Okay, so this is just happening to everyone, so this is totally fine. So the way that you have to look at this is, like, if the champion is a lane bully, that is where they're getting massive buffs, okay? So if, if they're a lane bully, then they're getting massive buffs. Oriana, I mean, it's 50. It's 50 on... It's not the end of the world. Nico, um... However, getting a lot of love there. Syndra is another one. Uh, Teemo and and uh, attack wind up. Uh, Twisted Fate is is getting one. That's actually really big for TF. Uh, Vigar, I mean Zareth. These are all massive. The Zoe one is absolutely insane for both mid and support Zoe. Um, reveal radius on attack four hundred to three hundred. Reveal cr uh, circle duration four point five to two seconds. This is really nice, actually. Okay, so you won't have the lingering anymore. Um, ping changes. More celebration within 10 seconds of getting an epic uh, allied pings. Directly your champion are visible to your team. Ping lockout timer. Um, I'm not going to comment on this because I, I've already commented on it. You can find clips. You can find stuff on my TikTok um, and stuff talking about this and whatnot. Obviously, the ping changes are the most abysmal thing ever. Um, and I, I've already said that um, it, like a lot of the changes that are happening, it, it almost feels like... You know what it feels like? It feels like we're actually in a Harry Potter book. And it feels like Voldemort was, like, defeated years ago. And what I'm referring to is Riot Light, okay? But somehow, Riot Light actually planted Horcruxes somewhere in Riot. 
And somehow, through some way, okay, Voldemort is actually returning, <laughs> okay. And I don't, I don't really know who Harry Potter is in, in this regard, okay. But look, there is, there's something real weird going on with a lot of the balance changes and just the the, the public outcry and and everything else that is that is going on because this game, okay, I'm really holding out for those like leaked uh, changes where like the map is apparently different. And there's supposed to be like a really big overhaul. And I actually have a lot of expectations. So I will say this. So normally Riot, uh, one of the things I've talked about on stream before, is that Riot apparently starts working on the next year's preseason, uh, what, 13 or 14 months in advance. This year's like true preseason is actually effectively being worked on, what, uh, 15 or 16 months in advance. So I have really high hopes and expectations. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm holding out for that. Otherwise, guys... Vince McMahon, Jeff. Vin Vince McMahon, just, you know what I mean. Um, Arena's coming back. I don't know when. Uh, global language select. Finally! Wow! Wow! Players can now? Wow, isn't that amazing? Used to be able to get banned on career for doing this, by the way. Used to be able to get banned. That is, uh, that is amazing. Um, that, okay, now, now you can select your actual language. This is so big. Um, this is mostly big, I think, for, like, TFT players on Korea, um, uh, unless, again, you, you change your language. Uh, uh, like, I, League is, like, sort of whatever. I mean, TFT, I don't know, whatever. It, it's totally fine. Um, Mythic Shop rotation, okay, and then bug fixes, etc., and obviously the Gangplank one is still not fixed. So, um, the Heart Seal skins are all absolutely amazing. They, they genuinely are. The Heart Seal, the Heart Seal skins are all really good. I do like them. Um, I, I do like the way that they're, they, they, they alter the, the, the light up, like this is a champion select screen. So it's like the lights are cast on different characters. Um, I do really like all the heart seal skins. Obviously you guys probably saw my tweet where I got hard ratioed by Mortdog, where there was the Jin skin. The Jin skin was just not doing it for me. Okay. That was, that was, that was just not it. Okay. That was, not, that was out of a horror movie. All right. Um, wait, I just realized, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. Did we get no Halloween skins? We better get Christmas skins. That's all I'm saying, guys. All I'm saying is that we better get Christmas skins. Anyways, that is it. I will see you guys all for Worlds, obviously, this weekend. T1 fighting, obviously. And uh, we need T1 to win. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Captain Korea needs to win. This is it. The balance changes. Not doing it. Okay, Worlds. That's it. All right, I will see you guys all there. Bye-bye.